Hi, this is Don Kedal reporting from Israel. Right now I'm in the mountains of Jerusalem, just outside the beautiful capital of Jerusalem. And today I want to bring before you a report about what's been happening lately. And I'm sure if you've been uh, watching any of the headlines coming from Israel, uh, probably not reporting in your uh, local news outlets, be it CNN or BBC or any of those. But what's been taking place is we've had a wave of terrorism uh, in the past, uh, I'd say, over a week now. There's been an awful wave of terrorism in Jerusalem and also uh, in the Hebron region. There's been multiple uh, attempts. But here's the good news, guys, is that every one of these attempts have foiled very little damage on the Israeli people, on the policemen, and on the military personnel that were targeted in these attacks. And that's just a miracle of God. Uh, I can tell you because I've seen uh, the footage of at least two of the attempted attacks, or actually I think it was three, and that I, that I was able to see and to watch the footage and see the, the, the terrorist attack unfold. And just watching that, the attempted attack and watching how it foiled was just incredible because being a secure professional like myself, you, you see things other people don't see. And I can tell you that it was the hand of God. It wasn't because of the professional ability of the soldiers or the policemen or, or what have you. Really, it was the hand of God that just helped these guys to, to react swiftly, to react just in the, in, the, in the split second moment of the attacks and to really stop a, a, what could have turned out to be a really bad attack on our people. And I just want to identify the hand of God in that because that's something that's hard for us to, to think about when we see these waves of terrorism. We just think about how awful it is, how bad it is, and, and how it makes us scared to, to roam the streets, to, to ride the buses, to go out to coffee with our friends or any of those things. You know, we just want to go on lockdown, you know, and be in our homes and not go out. But the thing is, that's what terrorists want us to, to do. They want us to live in fear. They want us to go on lockdown. And we should live our lives without fear. And we should be bold. And we should continue to, to live our lives here because we have a right to live here. We have a right to, to continue to build here. And you can hear probably in the background some sounds of building. I'm actually in a new community here just outside Jerusalem. And it's beautiful to see these beautiful homes being built by these wonderful Jews who are building up the per periphery of Jerusalem, the outside of Jerusalem as the city is really growing and hopefully one day just be a massive center for people from all over the world to come to because you know what, one day, here's what's so exciting, one day the nations are coming to Jerusalem because there's going to be a king seated on Mount Zion. The Messiah will be seated, he will be reigning and ruling in Jerusalem and it will be a wonderful day because as we know from Scripture, the nations are going to come up to Jerusalem. The nations are going to come up to Jerusalem. You understand what I'm saying? And so we need to, we need to start building. The Jewish people, we need to start building. And let me make a comment about that because that's one of the big issues, right? You hear about how the building in Judea and Samaria is an obstacle to peace. And our Prime Minister made a very strong statement just lately, which I'm so proud of. But what he did in short is he explained and he said, you know what? This notion that, that, that Jewish settlements, Jews playing in a sandbox in Samaria or in Judea, being an obstacle to, to peace is nonsense. Because what the world is saying is that they want the region of Israel to be ethnically cleansed of Jews. And Washington, within two hours, made a reply to his video message that he sent out from his office, from the Prime Minister's office. The building in Judea and Samaria is not an obstacle to peace. And to say that it is, is actually ethnic cleansing. And when the Palestinian Authority declares constantly that by the presence of Jews in Judea and Samaria is ethnic cleansing of Palestinians, they can get away with that. It's a double standard. And let me tell you something, Jews returning to, her, to their home is not ethnic cleansing, it's ethnically correct, it's ethnically right, it's the rightest thing in the world. Because we have over 3,000 years of history in this region. I'll give another example of how the Palestinian Authority gets away with these outlandish statements. There was a, ru a race in Jerusalem, a night race, and the PA immediately went out and said that this is a, an attempt of the nation of Israel of Judaizing Jerusalem. I'm sorry, <laughs> were the Palestinians here when King David conquered the stronghold of Zion? Were they here then? No. 
they weren't here. King David conquered it. He named it Jerusalem. He named Mount Zion, Mount Zion, the stronghold of Zion. So who coined the names and the history of this place? It's the Jewish king, King David. To say that today in the same capital of the reborn nation of Israel, the Jewish state of Israel, to, for us to ha hold a marathon in our capital is Judaizing the Jewish city of Jerusalem. That's moronic, it's stupid, and it just goes to show how the narrative is so demonic, so evil, so wrong from the other side. Because there's nothing more right about that. There's nothing more right than us being Jewish in our own nation and in our own capital. So this is Don Kedah with another report from Jerusalem, from the capital of the world and the capital of the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, reporting to you. Thank you for listening. Shalom. God bless you.